Alright, hello and welcome back to Professor White and Diabolical Box. Uh, last time we uh, made it through a couple rooms. We didn't make it out of the castle, remember that much or anything like that, but we made it. We made some semblance of progress. Did we just do machinery and stuff last time? Like, we wake up, we run through this. Anton tied us up, and he's apparently gonna eat a sucker blood or whatever. Yeah, I don't remember what we did last time, but I, I, apparently it... We didn't make it out of here. Can we jump into the hole? Oh no, we've already we've already seen this. I don't know, why did I think we was gonna jump through the hole? Also, I guess, why did they leave that as an interactable if it's just like... You know, look at it and it makes a spooky sound, but... Okay, we're in the secret. Shut up! Let me talk for five seconds. We're in the secret room now, I guess. That's a thing. Is any of this... No, we don't want to talk about anything that's here. There's a cat door or something. If I'm interpreting the proportions right. This door is shut tight too. This door serves as the only portal out of here. We'll need to open it to escape. Or I guess maybe it is human-sized? 135 magic lock, 50 pick rats. I'll look at it more when we get the chance to again. It seems that the lock here is some sort of magic square. In order to solve it, precision and winning numbers set each string of four vertical horizontal and diagonal numbers adds up to the same total. Solve the magic square to open the door. Well, we have one diagonal completed. So that adds up to uh, 18. So we need this here to be 18. And this, those are just like counting, then across the top, we have 8 and 16, so that's 18. 11 and 7 makes 18. Okay, and now this is where it gets tricky. So, uh, along this row is 13, so we need the 1 and the 4 to be here to add up to 18. And along the, the on top row, I mean 5, 5 and 8, okay. So then on the left column, we have 12. So we need 6. The only way to make 6 with what we have is 1 and 5. So that makes this the 1, this the 5, this the 8, this the 4. Alright. And this to verify, verify the other diagonal it does add up to 18. Sure does. I didn't mess up the last thing because I don't want to redo that. Consider this puzzle solved. All right, pretty straightforward. There we have Just it. a matter of adding, really. Very nice. Each horizontal, vertical, and diagonal line four tiles adds up to 18 and placed in the correct position. There's no onward freedom. I guess it's one through eight, so you could think of like having an eight and a one twice. So that's nine eighteen. Luke, the vent is now is. Luke, the vent is open now. Follow me. So it is small. It's just like a vent. Because, like, you can tell, like, I assumed, like, this w around here would be, um, like, head height. Which, I mean, it very well could be if you're calling through this as, like, a vent. Dining room. Hello, my man. What's going on with you? I forgot your name. Take care that you don't slip, Luke. The floor is polished with almost blinding shine. Yeah, oh, you're right. It's like a mirror. Who do you think does all this polishing? You're not going to acknowledge Nigel? Yeah, that would be me, sir. I forget what his voice is like. Ah, it's the butler. Yes, I certainly am. I don't mean to be presumptuous, but what are you two doing up at this hour? If you're having trouble falling asleep, I suggest a good strong puzzle to relax and clear the mind so in the wrong order. You're not going to try to stop us or anything? Stop you. Young sir, I have the foggiest notion of what you're talking about. Now, where was I? Ah, oh, yes, that puzzle. The hall has been hidden with a hidden door, though to my chagrin, I've forgotten where. However, I do recall an old saying the servants use in days past to remember the location of the door. I will now relate that to you. I will now relate to you that saying, and your task, dear guests, will be to decipher the door's location. So my voice isn't super flexible right now, so... Not that it ever is, but... 136, the hidden door, 40 pick rats, so I think he wants us to find it in some capacity. Begin from the doors, etched in the decor, a path will appear strong quite clear. I adjust my mic, it's probably gonna make you 
We heard a crunchy sound made of the start of the flare each within its own square. These birds are set to point the way to the hidden door, select the hidden door. I don't know what it's talking about. Begin from the doors, okay. I think it's like, you start from here and you have to follow this, the stars that are in their own square. So like, like, it's not in multiple squares and, oh, I see, it's, it's, um, right, I was gonna say like, what's up with this, but it's an arrow like that. So is it the one the arrow is pointing to like that, I guess? So I'm interpreting this. Solved. It sure is. Sorry. Huh. That wasn't as Wonderful. bad as I thought it was going to be. Excellent. The squares of stars contain neatly inside them from an arrow that points directly to the hidden door. Masterfully solved, sirs. Now that you've completed that little nightcap, I suggest returning to your quarters. These old halls can get quite drafty in the dead of night. I'll keep that in mind. Good night to you. <laughs> and to you too. Okay, I guess you're just here now. For forever. That's where we just came from. Oh. I can't believe there's not a single wrinkle on this tablecloth. Is there anything else here? A couple hint coins, I guess. Second floor hall. Anything interesting here? Apparently not. Oh, once again, I fail to tell which direction is supposed to be forward and backwards. I mean, I guess that one I could, you could compare to the map on the side. That was mostly my fault. Professor, I think I see a way, a way we can get out of here. Our search led us to the castle, and we're on the verge of revealing what killed Dr. Schrader. We must search this place thoroughly before we make our escape. Let's see what else is here. Gee, Professor, I don't know if that's such a good idea. Look, listen to me. We can't turn back and run. Not now. I, I mean, you can. We're so close to covering, uncovering the truth what full sense the illusion box. We must press on. Okay, I mean, that's kind of ominous, but we will go with it. Eight minutes. And we're in the great room. Now that is one heck of a chandelier. Yeah, the lights up there. There's a portrait of Anton in the corner. Take a look at this picture, Professor. I don't know why I said it like that. There he is, larger than life. The current master at the Herzen Castle. You mean the guy who just tried to tie us up and drink our blood? Strange. What strange, Professor? This picture. It shows far too much wear to have been made recently. Maybe he's just really, um, doesn't take good care of his paintings, I guess. Yet you saw Anton yourself. The man and his portrait are virtually identical. I mean, we already know at this point that he's over, looked like this for almost fif over 50 years. He doesn't age. He must really be a vampire. I knew it. We gotta get out of here this instant. Perhaps those rumors in town weren't entirely unfounded. But running about in panic has never solved anything. Why don't we take a moment to clear our heads with this puzzle about portraits? That seems like a... Yeah, okay, Luke's gonna say it for me. Are you kidding, Professor? I don't really think we really have time for this right now. I'm 32, sharing paintings, 40 pick rats. Hmm. Two brothers have inherited their parents' five-piece art collection. According the bill, the older brother will get a set of paintings for twice what the younger brother gets. In order to ascertain the value of the paintings, brother, brothers call it an appraiser, who value each painting is shown below. For our services, the appraiser was promised the one painting left over after the brothers divided the art according to their parents' wishes. According to the individual paintings can't be divided, which one does the appraiser get? So we need like... 
Essentially, I guess the question is here, um... Hmm, how do we go about this, actually? Yeah, the first thing to note is, like, what the values of each painting are in mod 3, because the total of the four that we pick has to be equal to zero. So, like, this one is two, this one is zero, this one is zero, this one is one, Nine and five is fourteen. One and four is five. Minus three is two. All right. So the four paintings that get split up has to be these three, and then either A or E. So um, these three together, fifty-five and forty-five. That's a hundred thousand. So that's. 160,000, right? With a 95... With the 95, that's a 245. Divided by 3... Is not divisible by 3. Oh, it's 255, that's the problem. That's gonna be 8... And 15, so that's 85, which you also can't add to, and n none of these are worth. If we go this hand, I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's E, I just want to be sure. We get 180, over 3 is 60, so the younger brother gets this one, which is worth 60. The older brother gets these three, which is worth 120. And the appraiser gets this one, which is the most expensive one, coincidentally. That was a good puzzle. That was like a well put together. Leaves no puzzle unsolved. I like that one. That's right. The appraiser sees painting E. The older brother inherits paintings A, C, and D, which are worth 120,000 total. The little brother gets a single painting worth 60,000, half of what his brother gets, although worth more than any individual painting. In the end, the appraiser takes home the most expensive painting of them all. Why is that convenient? Nicely answered, Luke. Perhaps it didn't seem like the ideal time for a puzzle, but being able to stand back and think criti critically and important than time stress is a skill of utmost importance. I appreciate the sentiment, Professor, but right now solving puzzles is the last thing on my mind. And I guess we got a few minutes left. And coin, anything else going on here? Uh, can we leave? We can for the sake of um, doing things like we got to complete our photo collection and that. Oh, hello, Katya. Oh, I do believe that's Katya. Oh, where are you two here? I can ask you the same thing. It's dangerous here. There's a vampire living in this castle, you know? I don't know why I tapped to a dialogue too way too early. Anton, he's no vampire, he's just... I'm quite puzzled, Katya. What do you know about this man? You should have let her finish her sentence. Um... It's not for me to say. Besides, right now, you must focus all your efforts on escaping. If you linger here, the madness will grip you before long. Madness? I'm afraid I don't understand. Please be honest with us. What's happening here? Very well, I'll explain everything. But first, you must get as far from this castle as possible, quickly. I know the way out. Follow me. Looks like we're gonna get a cutscene. How are you related to this entire situation? Are you just listen to her lately? There's no time. You've got to get out of here. Yeah. Is this the sword fight? I remember a sword this fight. Won't do. People are trying to sleep, you know. Is it you? It can't be. Oh, how I've waited. It's been so unbearably long. Professor, do you know what he's talking about? Not in the slightest. Come closer. My dear sweet Sophia, I've missed you so. <laughs> What's this? Oh, he thinks Leighton's her man. 
<laughs> Very well, then. Is this how it is? I didn't see this coming, Leighton. Not at all. I'm not sure I understand. This is your fault, but you can't have my Sophia. You're going to be very sorry you crossed me. It's his <laughs> sort of fault. Let's go. Alright, so I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> There's no lack of swords here. Oh, Take this is a puzzle. You, you gotta like. pick the only good Notice sword. This, though, only one of them is real. Yeah, I remember this. A true warrior always keeps his blade in hand. <gasps> so yeah, I'm... I just talk about what's going on here in the cutscene afterwards. 137, Montreal Sword, 50 Pick Rats. I remember what's going on, obviously. True warrior always keeps his blade in hand. Those are Anton's last words for Sylvain before the start of their duel. Did you find the real sword among Anton's collection? Circle your selection, draw your weapon of choice. I mean, that one's in the guy's hand. That's given that's their only clue. I'm guessing it's that one. This should do the trick. All right, good. If we survived this, I suppose. Huh, wonderful. I picked the wrong one. He dies. Like, not actually. They let you do the puzzle again. That would be funny. You know, if they raise the stakes a bit. Nicely done. A true warrior always keeps his blade in hand. Anton's words were a subtle hint. All the swords on the wall were for, for, for show. The only real sword in the bunch is the one sitting in the hand of that suit of armor. I guess he is. Wanted to give Leighton a chance. I mean, it's an abstraction. Don't worry about it. I didn't think you had it in you, Mr. Leighton. This lore behind us we won't get to see for a long time, but why Leighton can sort of fight. This is so well animated, I gotta say. The music works so well. Mm -hmm. Sophia belongs to me. You can't have her. Ah! Something strange is happening. I just need to catch my breath. <laughs> I mean, you're the no, one who started please, the sword fight. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll learn by his feet uh, here in a minute, too. Uh, Eventually. Uh, what's happened to me? Are you alright? Please just stop, Grandfather. Your body can't take it. Or are they going to tell what's going what on? What did you say? I don't understand. Sophia, dear. You haven't figured it out, have you? You really don't know. Then I guess it's up to me to tell you the truth. I'm your granddaughter, Anton. Hopefully we get a chance to save her. But yeah, like I was going to say, obviously from the diary, we know that Anton's girl took off. So clearly what's happening is he thinks uh, Katya is his girl, Sophia. Don't be ridiculous. Look at me. I'm too young to be anyone's grandfather. Why he doesn't know it's been 50 years is something we have yet to, uh, But what you cover. see around you isn't real. It's just an illusion created by your own mind. Yeah, we're, we're skipping ahead there. Your youth is part of that illusion. The truth is, well... You're old. Allow me, please. The gold mine built by your father, the late Duke Herzen, brought this town much growth and prosperity. But something terrible slept deep within that rich gold deposit. I guess I'll explain it here. Unbeknownst to the miners, they hit a vein of hallucinogenic gas while digging for gold. The gas made those who breathed it extremely susceptible to mental suggestion of all types. Tales of the nightmarish vision seen in full sense then spread, as did the town's sinister reputation. In truth, neither the full sense we see before us nor its residents really exist. This is all a creation of our minds. How did you figure it all out, Professor? 
The images of Fosens we saw are 50 years old, yet they show a town identical to the Fosens of today. I keep on to say things, but I think it's going to explain it that they primed. No town can remain unchanged for 50 long years. The painting primed their minds. The photos we saw in the train station yeah. formed our impression of the Fosens we'd seen. I'm trying to add stuff, but it, I know the game's just going to get to it eventually. The Fosens of 50 years ago. Enough of this madness. False sense is real. I'm real. None of it's real, Grandfather. This town is just a thin shadow. An illusion born of greed. And this is where it's gonna get sad, isn't it? You and Sophia 